everyone so it's time for my next Halloween tutorial which is actually a masquerade Halloween tutorial it's kind of funny because I was at Pier 1 not too long ago probably about a month ago picking out my bedroom furniture for my new bedroom in Los Angeles um, that's why my background is different say hello to my new background except it's not gonna be just like this because I'm painting the walls and stuff um, anyways though I was at Pier 1 and at checkout they had this mask and I have no idea why Pier 1 was selling masks it might be for like home decoration for um, Halloween or something, but I thought it was really, really pretty. So I decided that I wanted to base an entire Halloween makeup tutorial off of it. And it's kind of funny because after I put up my first um, Halloween makeup tutorial, which was my Snooky makeup tutorial, I was getting a lot of requests for other makeup tutorials. And one of the number one ones was a masquerade. And I was like, that is such a kind of ironic thing. But I wish I could have done a masquerade where I would either have painted it with, you know, my eyeshadows or made it myself. But I saw this one and I thought it was too pretty to pass up. It is black and sparkly and it has some rhinestones stones right here and I just thought it was really really pretty and then it has these feathers on the side and it has you might not be able to tell in the camera it might not pick it up um, but it has really really pretty purple and blue sparkles in it as well which is why I did um, purple eyes underneath so in this tutorial I'll be taking you through how to do the hair the makeup and how to choose your costume to go with it which I think is a lot of fun and it's something that you can be yourself with because you don't have to get this mask you can get a purple one you can get a yellow one a blue one a green one a pink one you can do anything you want I thought it was a really pretty look and the last thing I want to say before I start I know my intros are always so super long um, but the last thing I wanted to say before I start is that I know that this is not a scary Halloween makeup tutorial there are so many beauty gurus out there right now that are doing scary Halloween makeup tutorials which I think are great for me I feel like when I was dressing up for Halloween and stuff and I still do sometimes um, I felt like I never wanted to be anything scary. I wanted to be something pretty or cute or something like that. So that's why I decided to do this look for you guys. Um, and I know that I really wanted to do a lot of Halloween tutorials, but with my move to LA and stuff, it's been kind of put on the back burner. But um, who says that I can only do Halloween tutorials when it's about to be Halloween? I didn't make that rule and I don't know who did. So maybe like throughout the year, I'm just going to splash in a couple really fun editorial um, makeup tutorials. I think that would be fun. But I know that I have at least one other one that I want to put up before Halloween comes around. Um, yeah, but this is my Halloween masquerade makeup tutorial. I hope you guys enjoy it and let's go ahead and start the look. The first thing you want to do is prime your eyes. I'm using the Laura Mercier Eye Basics Eye Primer in the color Flax. This is just a neutral eye primer that are that is going to make my shadows last all day and all night. And especially for Halloween, you want your shadows to last all night. So just apply your favorite eye primer onto your eye and then we will move on to the eyeshadows. I'm using the Giselle Cosmetics 8-in-1 Stack Loose Eyeshadow. This isn't a quad because quads come with four, so I guess it's a double quad. So I'm using the Giselle Cosmetics Double Quad, and this is in the color Twilight, which anything that is in the color Twilight I think is completely appropriate for Halloween. But the first thing I'm going to do is take this very bottom color. It's actually a duochrome. What a duochrome is is if you put it over a dark base, like a black or a really dark blue base, it's going to change colors. But when you just apply it on its own, which I'm using... A flat shader brush to do this when you just apply it on its own it's just a very nice shimmery color so I'm going to pat this all over my lid and also under my brow as the highlight color this is just going to completely I guess shimmerize um, all of the colors that you put on your eyes so you can pack it all over the eye but focus it under the brow and on the lid. The last thing you want to do with this color is actually pat it right underneath your lower lash line. This is just going to brighten up your eyes and open your eyes. Now I'm taking the third eyeshadow down which is this really really pretty shimmery lilac lavender color and I'm just going to pat this onto the same brush and then apply this to my lid. So I'm just packing this onto the brush, tapping off any excess because you don't want the loose eyeshadow to fall down onto your face. And then I'm just going to pat this onto my lid. Now with loose eyeshadows, if you kind of rub like this, it is going to give you more fallout. So that's why I like to pack. You can use as much as you want. We just want the color to be very vibrant. And then using this same brush, I'm going to take this underneath as well. 
Now I'm taking the second shadow down, which is this really deep purple with little blue shimmers. And what you want is actually something to mix a little bit of this with either mixing medium or water, just something to give it more of a paste consistency instead of a powder. I'm actually using the back of one of my false eyelash um, cases that it came in. You can use anything. My favorite thing to use for this is something that you can actually wipe off and use it over and over again, which is a CD case, one of the plastic ones that doesn't have any of the papers in it. You can actually use that and then you can just wipe it off and use it over and over again. But what I'm going to do is just pour a little bit of this powder onto here and then I'm going to use some of my Max Mixing Medium. You can use water, you can use anything, but I'm just going to apply one drop to this and mix it up using the brush I'm actually going to be using, which is a Sigma SS266 brush. It is an angle eyeshadow brush that looks like this, or eyeliner brush, kind of whatever you want to use it for. The reason I'm doing this is because we're doing a pretty dramatic cut crease, and so I don't want anything too fluffy that is going to blend the line out. So I'm just mixing this up and getting a nice paste consistency. And then for my other eye, I actually held the mask up to kind of trace the shape of the eye of the mask. But for this eye, since I already, but for this eye, since I already have this eye done, I can just kind of follow the shape of my other eye. Most of the time when you're doing your own makeup, you're going to do, you know, shadow, shadow, crease, crease. Um, so it should be a little bit easier. But I'm just going to follow the shape of this one. As you can tell, I went a little above my natural crease and further out than I would normally go. So I'm just going to follow the same shape as much as I can. For the bottom, you want to make sure you leave a little bit of this purple under your lower lash line. Don't take this deep purple right up close to your lower lash line. And my favorite part of this actually is how we are going to bring the inner corner down. So from up here, just follow that and bring the inner corner down quite a ways. Now you can actually start making this line thicker. Just make sure that you don't go below the line that we already drew, except I'm going to fix this part up right here. Okay, so now you don't wanna go under the line that you already drew, but you can make it thicker. And the great thing about this is that, as you can see over here, I actually didn't blend the top of the crease. That's because it's not necessary, because when you put the mask on, it's covered anyways. So that's an easy step that you can kind of just skip over, but you do wanna make this thick enough to where it does come to where the mask is going to come. So really, I mean, you could take it all the way up if you wanted to. You don't really have to do a sharp line or anything like that. It's just whatever is easiest for you. And what's easiest for me is just taking the line up just a little bit. So that's what I'm doing. Now I'm going to take just a little bit of the powder shadow that hasn't been mixed in with the mixing medium or the water that you've used and I'm going to just put it on the same brush and pat that on top of what I just did. That way this is going to set and it's not going to smear anywhere and it's going to stay forever and forever well until you wash your face. Um, yeah, so just pat this on. Also I feel like it gets a little bit shimmerier when you pat on the dry um, powder onto it. That's how easy it is for the eyeshadows. Now I'm going to take a pencil liner. This is Max Black Funk. This was actually limited edition, but any pencil liner is going to work. And I'm going to line my waterline, which is this little flap of skin right here. Then I'm going to take a liquid liner. Now you guys know that most of the time I don't like liquid liners. I like gel liners or pencil liners, but for this look, since I'm going to bring it down into the inner corner, it's a little bit easier if you use liquid. So this is the Paladino Eye Ink Felt Tip Liquid Liner. I got this at Ulta. And it's just a liquid liner that comes like this. MAC has one that's a lot more expensive. You can kind of tell on this eye how I just have a pretty thick line. And this is actually easy because you can kind of just lay the pin down on your eye and slide it across. I can't talk while I do this, but I'm going to try my hardest to stay in the frame so that you guys can see me do it. I 
I hope I at least stayed in the frame for a little bit of that, but my camera also died, so I had to pick it up and plug in the cord, and then I don't remember exactly how I had my background set up or if I was zoomed in or anything. Um, so I hope that I look kind of the same, but I am now going to apply these false lashes. They're really pretty. They have glitters on them. They also came with lower lashes, but I felt like when I put the mask on, I wanted glitter on it um, just to kind of tie it in a little bit. I could have just done regular false lashes, but I wanted the glitter on them. The only thing is that when I did the lower lashes, it was actually kind of hard to fit the mask on my eye and get it like under the lashes and over the lashes. So that's why I decided just to do the upper lashes. But I actually have a tutorial on how to apply false lashes, which I will link right here. Do, 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 click. Um, and I'll also link it in the bottom bar if you want to go watch how I apply my false lashes. But I'm going to do that and I'll be right back. Wow, okay you guys, I am totally a loser. I stopped recording this because I wanted to put my false lashes on and I didn't, you know, want to take up a lot of space on my camera and then I kept talking to you guys and then I talked about my cheeks and I did it and then I realized I wasn't recording. So I decided that for cheeks and lips, I didn't want to do anything too dramatic. I didn't want to do something that was going to take away from my eyes since they are so out there. So for cheeks, all I did was apply a little bit of the Giselle Cosmetics um, Mineral Face Bronzer in Gold Digger and I did this using a contouring brush. I just swept it across my cheeks like this and that is how easy that was. And then for lips, I'm just going to take this Forever 21 lip gloss. It doesn't even have a name. It came in a pack of four for like $4.45. They're really great quality. I love them. And they're good because they're only like a dollar a piece and you can throw them in multiple purses and stuff and you don't have to worry about switching it out. And if you lose them, it's not the end of the world. But this is the kind of champagne shimmery color. And yeah. So that is how easy it is to do the makeup. I scooted my chair back a little bit so that you guys would be able to see what I did with my hair. Now, I was going to do a tutorial on this, but I already have one up. You can click the annotation that I put right here, or I'll link it in the bottom bar. Um, I think it's called my Miley Cyrus Inspired Hair Curling Tutorial, or something like that. It's something Miley Cyrus Hair tutorial. Um, and I actually wish that I would have done this after Nina Dobrev's character Catherine in the Vampire Diaries actually became more into the picture because I feel like this is kind of how Catherine does her hair. All you have to do is use a one inch curling iron, wrap it around the curling iron, let it sit for a couple seconds, take it out, spray it, and don't brush it out. That's the key to this hair tutorial is that you don't want to brush the curls out, you want them to stay intact. So to actually put the mask on, lots of people would actually take this mask and they would just put it on and then they would tie the little strings around their head. That's not how I'm gonna do it. I'm going to separate my hair right at eye level. And if you had a friend or a parent or someone to help you hold the hair up, it would be better than actually having to use a clip since it might crinkle the hair a little bit. Um, but I'm having to use a clip, so just clip that up and then I'm going to put the mask on and tie it underneath. Now, I like this a lot better than just tying it over your hair because of Hilary Duff's character in A Cinderella Story when she was wearing her mask, I always noticed that it was underneath. So when you're putting this on, make sure that you watch out for your false lashes and then I'm just going to take it around my head and tie it up like this. And you want to tie it pretty secure. So I've tied it and then you can kind of situate it perfectly how you need it. So that's how I wanted it. So I'm just taking the clip down and then you want to make sure that none of the hair that you pulled down is falling on top of the feathers because it will make them wrinkle in a non-attractive way. Um, yeah. That's all you need for the hair, the makeup, and the mask. Now the last thing is the costume. Now I opted just to do a black dress. I got one with little geometric shape cutouts, which I thought was really, really pretty. Uh, but you could do anything, and of course it depends. These feathers are getting in my mouth. Of course it depends. <laughs> that is so weird. Um, it depends on which mask you get, what color you decide to do, but there are so many different options you can do. And I thought that just pairing it with a simple black dress and maybe even doing like purple sparkly heels if I could find it. I thought that would be really, really pretty. So that's how easy it is. You can completely be original and customize it. You know, if you wanted to do bright eyes under the mask or if you wanted to get a bright mask and do different eyes, of course you can do that. But this is the kind of combination that I liked the most. And I love that it's black so you can kind of wear any color with it. Um, yeah, so that's it. I hope that, cross your fingers, I can get my next Halloween tutorial up really, really soon. But I will talk to you guys next time. Bye!